What is up, Janksters? It's your boy Graham, also known as Hamhox42 on the internet, and today we have a really fun deck built around Laelia the Blade Reforged. This is a card that was introduced into Historic through Historic Anthology 6, and we decided to build an aggro deck leveraging everything that they do. Uh, this is a 2 2 haster for 3 with whenever Laelia the Blade Reforged attacks, exile the top card of your library, you may play that card this turn. Whenever one or more cards are put into exile from your library and or your graveyard, put a plus one plus one counter on them. So as you can imagine, this gets out of hand really, really fast. It's a beautiful little snowball that we can get rolling downhill pretty quickly. And I'm looking forward to showing you that deck and playing some gameplay with it. But first, I need to give a huge shout out and a huge thank you to my patrons. So a huge thank you to LC89 and Silent Labber. You are amazing. Thank you for holding it down and keeping, keeping my lights on. It means the world. And if you, the viewer, would like to join our illustrious halls of champions here, it is as little as $1 a month over on Patreon. There's a link in the description. Thank you for even considering it. I appreciate it very, very much. And with that, let's get into the deck. All right, so this is a historic best of one list. We don't have a sideboard for it at the moment, but that's okay. Let's see what we got. So first of all, we do have Leelu the Blade Reforged. Their paramount is very, very important to make this deck work. Obviously, it's the builder on. And as you can imagine, we have a ton of effects that can exile cards from our library as well as our graveyard. The most important one, I gotta say, is Bomat Courier. Bomat Courier plus Leelia is just cash money in the bank. If Bomat Courier attacks and Laelia attacks, even the turn Laelia comes onto the battlefield. Even at, so Laelia sticks as a 2-2, you attack with Laelia and the, the Bomat Courier. Two triggers go on the stack. One exiles face up, so you can play it this turn from Laelia. Okay, cool. The next exiles face down under Bomat Courier. Guess what? Still exiles from your library. So as a result, Laelia gets two plus one plus one counters. That may not sound like a big deal, but... The turn that they, they come into play, this doubles their attack power and toughness. And if that's allowed to go multiple turns, I mean, so on turn three, you're attacking with a four, four. Turn four, assuming the Bomat Courier survives, you're then attacking with a six, six. You know, if you get multiple Bomat Couriers on the field, forget about it. It's about to get out of hand. And hopefully I get to show that off a little bit during our gameplay later. It's going to be tons of fun. So yeah, that obviously just big time. We also have Stonebinders Familiar in here. This is another card that benefits from cards going into exile. Where Laelia cares about where the cards come from, Stonebinders Familiar does not. Stonebinders Familiar just says if a card is put into exile, it doesn't matter if it's your card, doesn't matter if your opponent's card, as long as it went into exile during your turn, you put a plus one plus one counter on Stonebinders Familiar. Now, unfortunately, this card is really good, but it's not great because it only triggers once per turn. So that's a bit unfortunate. If this triggered multiple times in a turn, holy cow, it would get absolutely insane. But then that's exactly why they made it trigger only once per turn. It's fair bouncing mechanic. I get it, but I want I want my puppers to get gigantic really fast. Instead, it's just going to get pretty big over the course of the game, which is still good. We like that uh, in, in an aggro deck. The, the, and this is an aggro deck. Make no mistake. The goal is to count to 20 as quickly as possible. And by count to 20, I mean dealing 20 damage to our opponent. And Stonebinders Familiar allows you to start ramping that up pretty darn early, which is nice. We like that. Uh, we also have Lion Sash. This is a way that we can actually exile cards from graveyards, which is nice because there are a lot of graveyard shenanigans going on out there. If your opponent hits, say, a Grease Fang with a Parhelion in their yard, if you have a Lion Sash on board, you can just pay one and just exile the Parhelion. Their whole combo, their whole deck falls apart. It's pretty great. That's nice. But conversely, if your opponent isn't paying attention, they may not realize that you can exile cards from your own graveyard with this to buff up Laelia. And you can do that at instant speed. So if you have cards in your graveyard, they can be any card. You can just exile them to buff up Laelia at instant speed. Very powerful stuff. Opponents don't see it coming a lot of the time. It's kind of a cute little trick, but it works. My goodness, it works. Speaking of exiling cards from our own graveyard, we also have Grim Lava Mancer. This is a 1 1 for 2. Pay one red, tap, exile two cards from your graveyard. So that triggers, that buffs Laelia right there. And then it deals two damage to any target. Grim Lava Mancer is fantastic in the late game for picking off opponent's blockers that are getting in the way of really good attacks. Um, cards like Prosperous Innkeepers and Soul Wardens, we want to get those out of the way. One, so that our opponent doesn't gain life in those particular cases. But also, we need to be able to attack. We need those clear attacking lanes. Grim Lava Mancer can do that. Also, as a nice little bonus, Grim Lava Mancer can also just finish the freaking game by doing two, two to the dome, because sometimes that's exactly what you need. So Grim Lava Mancer is excellent, and throughout the course of the game, cards are going to be going to our graveyard just by the nature of how the game works. So that's going to be great. We love that. 
Good stuff. We also have Remorseful Cleric. This might look like a weird include since we already have Lion Sash, but trust me, it's actually quite strong. Remorseful Cleric is a 2-1 flyer for two. Right there, we have two power in the air. That's good. We don't have many flyers in this list, so that's actually pretty darn useful. And then it has the ability, sacrifice it, exile target player's graveyard. Now, we can use that on our own graveyard to give Laelia a plus one, plus one counter. Unfortunately, it is only one in that case because it's one instance of cards leaving our graveyard. However, we can also use this to exile our opponent's graveyard. And unlike Lion Sash, this is a card that a lot of people just kind of forgot about. So it's one of those little onboard tricks that your opponent might would just walk into, which is nice. Uh, all the while, it's dealing two damage to our opponent turn after turn. So that's pretty darn good. Also, because this is an aggro deck, we are trying to get to about three or four lands. And we don't necessarily want more than that. So having a bunch of mana lying around to feed our Lion Sashes might be really difficult. We may be tapped out. At the end of most turns, especially in like the early to mid game, we probably will be. And a Remorseful Cleric we can use to hit on our opponent's graveyard at instant speed with no mana investment. So that's surprisingly valuable. So I've done a couple of different versions of this deck. Some have Remorseful Cleric, some don't. I have found it is usually good to have. So that's nice. We also have Sun Gold Sentinel. You, you may know the theme is Graveyard Hate. We do have a lot of Graveyard Hate. Um, there's no question about that. Um, partially because it synergizes with our plan if we, you know, hate on our own graveyard uh, by buffing Laelia. But also, there are a ton of Graveyard strategies out there right now. Reanimator's a thing in Historic. We've got um, Phoenix, you know, Phoenix and... Um, Delirium, that's definitely an archetype that we need to be ready for. And then you have Grease Fang Vehicle Reanimation. It's just, and Mizzix's Mastery Shenanigans. Right now in Historic, it is a graveyard-centric format, or at least in my experience on the latter. So I want to be ready for that here, and we are. So Sun Gold Sentinel, whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, exile up to one target card from a graveyard. Can be your opponent's, can be yours. And then this also has a Coven ability that basically gives it like a quasi-protection from a color if we have three different powers on board, which is not that hard to pull off in this deck. Between Lion Sash and Laelia constantly growing and, you know, their power and toughness, or, you know, kind of changing over the course of the game, it's not too hard. And Sun Gold Sentinel is also just casually a 3-2 for 2 in one color pretty darn good so just just a solid card we like that speaking of just solid cards that are in here because they're just freaking good we also have brutal cathar it adds to the boar state it removes our opponent's stuff it has ward if it's nighttime if it flips multiple times it can remove multiple things it's just the card's great i don't know what else to say also using brutal cathar with stonebinder's familiar on the field buffs the familiar which is nice because the card is going into exile you'll love to see it speaking of cards going into exile we also have fragment reality this card is savage especially in the early game for your opponent drops a one or two drop you're probably going to get it for free um you know it's one of those things if they hit a one drop you just blast it with this the thing's gone period soul warden on one fragment reality on one your turns your turn didn't have any effect it's nice um meanwhile uh, if they drop like a five or six drop, you can still fragment reality and downgrade it to something else, which is it is possible to get a pesky blocker out of the way. It's possible to disrupt your opponent's plans in very strong ways. I think fragment reality is actually an excellent card and it fits this theme quite nicely. And also it's exiling. So again, buffs is not familiar. familiar. Um, <clears throat> good stuff. And then the last two cards that I want to talk about, we have Light Up the Stage. This is great for refilling our hand after we have dumped a bunch of stuff on the board. And it's exiling cards from our library. So if we have to cast it pre-combat, even if we haven't managed to deal damage to our opponent, it can buff our Lealia, which is really nice. We like to see that. And it helps us dig for Lealia or other great threats that can help kind of, you know, work our opponent's life totally in the early game. And then we have Angel Fire Ignition. <clears throat> if you're in aggro and you're in Boros, you probably want Angel Fire Ignition. There's nothing this card doesn't do. It gives you counters on your things. So it, it grows a creature. It makes it pretty, like, pretty much the perfect attacker for a turn. It's got Vigilance, Trample, Lifelink, Indestructible, and Haste. And you can flash it back. So if you have a good board state going on turn three, you know, on turns two or three, you hit an Angel Fire Ignition on turns three or four. Like, turn four is really, like, the sweet spot. If we can get a Laelia down on three... Hit, it, hit them with an Angel Fire Ignition on four, and then flash it back on five. Oh boy, get out of here. It is absurd. Also, the flashback cost, when you cast it for flashback, you are exiling it out of your graveyard. That also triggers Laelia. So we just have a ton of synergies in this thing. And if we can stick Laelia and get them attacking consistently, 
it's gonna get out of hand really really fast so that's the goal that's the deck and yeah if you enjoy this deck tech if you are interested in this particular brew and you want to see more like it please hit that subscribe button i do deck techs over here pretty regularly usually about two a week or so in addition to stream vods where we show off decks that we actually build live on stream twitch.tv slash hamhawks42 love to see you out there too but with that let's get into the gameplay and see what this thing can do all right I see two lands in the opening hand, one of which is an Inspiring Vantage, which is excellent, not to mention Stonebinder's Familiar. I think this is a keep. We don't have Ligelia, nor do we have a third land, so hopefully those those two things change in the not-too-distant future, but it's okay. Ooh, our opponent going to the graveyard right away. Dumping a Dracusath and a Rise. Holy cow, they're going for it. Good for them. Good for them. All right, we're going to go Stonebinder's first. Woof, woof, little buddy. Woof, woof. Just a supplier, okay, sure. Fill that yard. Uh, and unfortunately, we don't really have a good attack here. We could fragment the Stitcher Supplier. That's an option. I think what I want to do is I want to shock that in. I'm going to fragment the Stitcher Supplier so they don't get the additional mill three. Presumably, they don't have a zero drop because Ornithopter is not really a thing that that deck runs. And I cast out the Grim Lava Master there. I probably should have attacked and used Light at the stage. Probably would have been smarter. Never said I was smart. Another Faithless Looting in the house. My goodness. Scholar of Velostros. Okay, their top end is pretty sick here. All right, but now we have the benefit of a mother flipping Lion Sash. Now, do we want to exile a card from the graveyard right now? We can get rid of one of the Scholars. We can get rid of Drac. Those are both pretty good, but I think, to be honest, it is in my best interest. I'm missing out on one damage here because I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait to use the Lion Sash. I want them to target something in the graveyard first. Pyre, the Stonebinders. Uh, mildly annoying, but that's fine. All right. Now they're tapped out, I'll use my one remaining mana to get rid of one of those Scholars. Scholar of Lost Troves makes me nervous. Um... To go ahead and get rid of the other scholar nom 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 and my cat is bunting my desk which is always fun get rid of drac yeah graveyard hate graveyard hate against reanimator it's it's excellent absolutely excellent that in that that situation uh my green screen is really going going to town on my teeth you'll love to see it in that situation um our our deck was just yeah, well, our deck actually didn't do anything. Lion Sash alone single-handedly took a uh, carried us that game. But I'll take it. <laughs> Let's go on to the next. All right. This hand is full of gas, but no lands. So, yeah, it's an easy mall. This is looking so much better. Let's go. I'm going to keep this, and I do want to make sure we hit that Brutal Cathar on time. So I'm going to let one of the Lava Mancers go. Um, we're gonna go ahead and throw Vantage Courier. Slap. Boom. And we're going up against a Lurus deck. I'm guessing probably a Phoenix situation. I could be wrong. Also, I did uh, wrestle with my green screen a little bit. I think we're gonna be in better shape for the remainder of the match. We'll see. All right. So for the remainder of the video, let's crash on in. Courier doing courier things. <clears throat> the fabled passage. Ooh, actually, I'm curious. Actually, I'll be very interested to see what color they grab. They grab black. Okay. Lighten up the stage. Sun gold's not bad. Fragment doesn't have a target right now. So I guess we play out the lava mancer and say go. Ooh, they're on Rakdos. Oh, this is probably Arcanist. This is probably what we're dealing with. So are they going to cast... Are they gonna play the Croxa? Is the question. We got a Croxa. Ooh, they're gonna go. They're gonna infernal grasp my Lava Mancer. They are threatened by the Lava Mancer. Intriguing. Okay. Might as well play the Sentinel because otherwise we lose them. Boop. Um. I'm gonna shock that in so we have the option of sacking the Bomat Courier, if need be. I want to be able to turn two cards into three if our opponent targets the courier Ooh, 
Scourge of the Skyclaves. Let's go. All right, Oppo. I like your style. I do. I'm going to eat that Scourge, but still, I like your style. Nom, 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 nom. All right, Fable Passage is going bye-bye. Bone Mac Carrier doing things. Now, if they have a kill spell for the Brutal Cathar here, I'll be mildly sad because that Scourge is only going to be getting bigger. Granted, it's, I mean, the only reason it's 4-4 right now is because we shocked in two Sacred Foundries. We are on Jund. Maelstrom Pulse. Interesting. Okay. Rock on. Thought Sneeze. Okay. If I were them, I'd probably go for the Familiar. Yeah. Makes sense. Now, we got the Angel Fire Ignition, which I will always hear R. Kelly's remix to Ignition every time I see this card. I can't help it. Angel Fire Ignition, hip hopping fresh out the kitchen. Anyway, um, so we can cast it on Bone Mat, but it just becomes a 3 3, which the Scourge can easily block. We do gain 3 life. Bone Mat attacks, we get in for 3. Eh. I think we're better off doing this, actually. go five four and not worry about um and not attack with bone mat yeah and we gain life so the scourge dies yes let's go life link for the win oh we kind of put it on bone mat after all dang it all right <laughs> that said we did we did exactly what we came here to do damage 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 Game was short. We came out on top. That was exactly how we wrote it up. Um, yeah, let's go on to, to another one. See if we can do that again. I see Laelia. Now, we haven't had an opportunity to really show off what Laelia can do yet. I think this hand might be that opportunity. Most notably because of light up the stage. <clears throat> if our Stonebinder's Familiar is able to connect this next turn, we can cast light up the stage, dig for the other lands we need. Sacred Foundry, that'll do. That'll definitely do. Um, all right. Yoink. Light up into another light up and an inspiring vantage. Okay, that'll work. We can work with that. Now, the real question is, do we want to throw... We're going to throw the inspiring vantage either way. Because this is the last turn it's going to come into play untapped, and if we don't use it, we lose it. Um, the question is... Do we slap a sun gold and hit the light up, get more cards, or do we throw a Laelia here and get the ball rolling? That is the question. I think I'm gonna go the more conservative route here. This is gonna be a little bit slower. Uh, we don't actually have any way to use our graveyard, so we might as well do this to get the stonebinder a buff. <clears throat> Cracking in, hit another light. All right. Not amazing, but not bad. Now, in this case, I think I am going to let the... I am going to go ahead and miss out on the Remorseful Cleric and not think anything of it to get Laelia down. Here we go. Here we go, we got some triggers. Trigger, trigger, trigger. This is what we're talking about. <clears throat> and I shocked in, boom, baby. And I shocked in the Sacred Foundry. That way, if we did flip into a one drop off of Laeli, we'd be able to cast it. But we didn't, so, so be it. We're getting ineffable, sure. Getting a little bit of life off the beacons. Okay, so did you get a chump blocker here, which I'm not enamored by, but I'm also not worried about. So. Let's do this. Angel Fire Ignition. Yeah, and Suckle Sentinel's a color thing, so it colorless doesn't do anything. Yeah. Boom. Sheer power. That is what this deck is about. Sheer fast power. <laughs> 
that's the name of the game um yeah so thank you so much for checking out the video those were some three those were three very quick games uh which is exactly what we needed so yeah thank you for checking out the video if you enjoyed this please subscribe if you'd also like to see other decks if you have if you have cool deck ideas i'd love to hear them please leave those in the comments below or if you want to join the discord server we have a ton of conversations all the time around different deck ideas and things that we can brew i also do brew a lot of these decks live on stream twitch.tv slash hamhawks42 i'd love to see you out there and yeah stay good to each other and i'll catch you on the next one.